This video is to introduce how the Just Macros application allows you to use the joystick on some of the X keys panels to control ATM functions. Before I go into too much detail about how that works, I wanted to briefly go over some of the usability features we've put in the Just Macros application. Uh, the first of those is snapshots. So if I show how that works, so if I put key 4 on air and just position it, if I take a snapshot of that key's position, that snapshot, I just access the right mouse click and it builds me a macro which is setting all of the properties that the key is right now uh, without me having to type any code. Um, if we now just move over to the other end of the screen and take a second snapshot we can then see how we can jump between the two different recordings that we had. And obviously all of the settings of the key are getting set just in one in one hit. Uh, and it doesn't matter if even if we if we move to the center of the screen and we change the keys type to be a diamond and a bit bigger. If we re snapshot that now uh, add snapshot. Key four we can see that we can go back to the DVE key and quickly to the shaped key and it remembers all the settings. One of the other features we've added in this new version is the assign function. So if we select the macro that we want and then say assign, all we then have to do is select the button that we want to assign it to. Uh, if you have to hit it twice it means that your fir the first hit is selecting the panel. So if we now select the second one, select assign, hit it once, select the panel, second time it assigns the button, and the third one, assign. And then we can see that just with one button action, we can just set between our different settings. And that's snapshots and assignments. And these features are also available on the actual panels. Thank you. Thank you. In order to control the transition and keys on the ATM mixers, there are a lot of settings which are, have numerical values and are slightly awkward to control with a keyboard and mouse or just with standard X keys buttons. The Just Macros application uses this precision three axis joystick uh, to, to map the joystick onto functions of the ATM mixer. If we look how that works, uh, if we turn key two on, that's a patterned key and uh, by holding the joy select button down and then pressing the key 2 on the next transition row then that tells the joystick to assign default functions for that type of key so this is a patterned key and if we just push to the left or to the right that moves the X axis offset which you can see there moving in the software and you see the joystick is very, very sensitive. You can move very, very slowly, but you need very little movement. And obviously the Y axis does the Y. And the Z does the size. The size, the Z axis, because it's an infinite rotation, is very useful. So I've defined a couple of macros which allow us to toggle the function. So if I go down one function, that will allow me to control the symmetry of the pattern. Or I go down again and it will allow me to control the softness of the pattern. And all just with a twist of the joystick. So to move on to a more interesting key, if we turn that key off, uh, we'll put our Casper CG showing a graphic on the background and turn key 3 on. What we've got here is a Lego Starship on a green background. Uh, it is a chroma key key if we just scroll down make sure that's true. 
can see the settings of the chroma key there. So again, we use the Joy Select and Key 3 on the next transition, and that will tell the system to immediately set the joystick up for the right defaults. So as I push it to the left, you can see the hues moving very, very slowly. If I push it up, then the gain will rise. We we'll get the gain quite high. Maybe not quite that high. And the Z axis by default controls the absolute fine calibration of the hue. So we'll try and get it pretty much white, I think. And then again, next and previous will allow us to go through the other settings. So if we push that up and that down we'll quite quickly get a relatively good key I think we'll lift down a bit more push that one up a bit more there we go that looks pretty good and uh, so we've used the joystick to set up the chroma key pretty quickly and easily minimum number of buttons no mouse actions uh, we can take it a step further I've also got a macro here which will allow me to turn the fly on on this particular key and then by reselecting it with Joy Select, because Fly is now enabled, the system will default this to now be controlling the position of that key and its size on the Z axis. So we can squash it right up, fire it off up there. And then we can use Shift and Run to A, will actually store as A. And so if we just run to full, you can see the Starship shooting in and reversing back out again. Back in again. Uh, and once again, the up and down will allow us to toggle through the various settings. And I happen to know that three down from standard allows me to control the rotation of my Starship. So I'm going to rotate it a little, go back up again, make it a bit smaller over here and we'll store that as position B so now we can run to A run to full run to B and I just use shift run to full to push it out to infinity The final part of this video is to introduce a new feature we've developed called User Wait. User Wait functions very much like a sleep or a delay in the existing system. However, the user can interrupt the, the wait by pressing the Continue All button. To illustrate this, we've built a Titles macro, which I'm going to run now. And you can see that's put the colour source on background, which is grey. It's put our logo on key 1 and it's set Casper CG up on key 2 ready to play in some pre-recorded clips that we've got ready to go and it, we're waiting for the first clip to come in the first clips come in the presenter would now be expected to talk about that story for a few seconds and then the TD would bring in the next clip and they'd talk about that story for a, a short while as well each of these clips are being a full HD clips and they're being rendered on their own layer within a single Casper CG renderer each layer can have its, its brightness, its contrast, its saturation. All of those settings can be controlled. And uh, yeah, it's quite a useful feature. If we just continue on to the final clip. And then what will now happen is we'll sting into our studio, or in our case, uh, flowers background. And we've taken the keys off, or the keys have gone off in the transition. We've brought the downstream keyer on, and we've brought our on-screen furniture on, which is our ticker explaining where the graphics of the sun came from. We're still in a user wait state and the titles macro is still running. If we kill off this ticker then that will bring our title sequence to an end and takes the downstream key off air and we're back with the mixer ready to go. Included in the pack with the latest download are lots and lots more macros. Uh, one of the things that we can do is we can show this panel here is an example source selection panel. It's made up of 24 macros that run 
and they just allow us to control the auxiliary outputs and the keyer, the, the sources for the keyers and the downstream keyers. So if we look at key 2, which is what we're currently recording the computer on, and we just press uh, inputs for the two different sorts of flowers, you can see we can very easily control what we're recording on our additional record. Uh, we could also put key 4 on air and uh, select key 4 here. We can see that it's currently showing MP2 is on there and we can go through the different stills that are available on MP2 or change it to a clip and play that clip, pause the clip, step it forward, step it backwards, turn the loop mode on and off. All the features that you find within the software can be reproduced using macros and you'll now find most of those macros in the example pack. Thank you.